Welcome to the Mega Campaign 2021. Hello, my gravy babies, and welcome back to another end of year special we do on the channel, which is our annual Mega Campaign. And this one, I'm hoping, is gonna be a doozy. Obviously, it'll be hard to top last year's Mega Campaign. I know a lot of you fell in love with Pepe, and I did too, but I am so glad he's buried six feet under at this point. But before we get into anything, I do have to say a few end of your thank yous and that is to everyone that has supported this channel if you've been here from the start the beginning all the way back when we were doing terrible videos in 2014 2015 to uh you know artillery only you know 2017 uh country roulette all of the big milestones we've ever reached up until this point hey maybe you, you subscribed yesterday i want to thank you specifically for supporting the channel it has been a great honor for this whole lifespan of the channel to create content that you guys laugh and enjoy and remember and meme about up until, well, you, you never stop memeing about some of it, looking at you, Pepe. And to everyone that has supported the channel by buying merch or just leaving a like and hitting the subscribe button, we are at, um, well, I'm actually recording this before December. I uh, just want to put that out there because of reasons, but uh, whatever subscriber goal we are currently at, I'll put it right here thank you for hitting the sub button and just coming along and watching the videos it's all that matters and uh it makes me feel very happy to know that there are so many people who want to watch me be an idiot in video games but yes nonetheless it is time for us to get into the mega campaign if you don't know what a mega campaign is every year on this channel at december we get ourselves a a mega cam pain worth of trouble because usually it doesn't go too well but what the mega campaign is we start in ck3 we move on to eu4 victoria 2 and then hearts of iron falls where we let it all rest up and that's all on the same saved game and how do we do that we do that with the wonderful people who make all the mods for the converters which every single one of them will be linked down below because i everyone should support these modders they are doing a hell of a job and they are wonderful people who help me behind the scenes when i um uh, sometimes break stuff but yes i don't want to ramble on too much because i'm not alex the rambles <laughs> so you may be wondering who exactly we are going to be playing us in this mega campaign we've done spain we did england into america we did france into the crusaders in the middle east and this time i want to play somewhere completely different that's right <laughs> down to benin we go uh, yeah, not quite not quite we're actually going east because whilst not specifically on the map there is a nation i want to play as at least one that doesn't quite exist yet can you spot it can you see it anywhere on the culture map no that's because it doesn't exist <laughs> that's right whilst not actually in the game han chinese is a culture in ck3 and i want to take what potentially is a country that does not exist nor have <laughs> any concept of existing in this timeline and i want to make our chinese state uh, of course this is going to be a bit tricky because as we know there is a certain man that comes <laughs> comes west that kind of messes this region up so we too might have to do a bit of emigrating away from this region they should we're going to be playing as is song ka although uh, it probably won't stay as song ka for too long and also i think we may have to spruce up our leader a little bit here oh I actually no that's perfect <laughs> why does it look like dark side phil <laughs> now we're not going to make him overpowered like we did with the original pepe i just kind of want to make him ugly is what i'm saying <laughs> we can also start off by making him hand chinese but you don't have to do this you can start off in the uh, province and just automatically convert him to Chinese it, it does it doesn't matter but we're just gonna do this anyway I do gotta say that is a slightly unfortunate haircut my friend but you're um you're about to get even more unfortunate I do imagine <laughs> I can't make him a small person all right what do you think mashed potato or boiled potato okay well, okay we're two minutes in I've already I've made him look like a diglet <laughs> the more that I look at this the more I realize I'm creating a Disney villain <laughs> what did they take from you my eyebrows <laughs> his eyes are so <laughs> what did you see <laughs> stop sucking on your lip <laughs> look at him 
Look, he's happy. Now he's sad. He's happy. He's sad. Happy sad. I warned you not to suck on your lip. Look. Now it's gone. And your little teeth are hanging out. All right. Okay. This is definitely the most cursed thing I'm about to show you. Look at that. He's such a happy guy, right? The man that's gonna build an empire, everyone. You got anything to say for yourself, Mr. Shang? Put me out of my misery. But we have Shang of the Han Dynasty that's been sent west to explore the world and conquer land in the name of China. But also they probably just sent him west because they couldn't bear to look at him anymore. Bicycle feet! Uh, actually, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna make him an overseer. <laughs> it's not even worth it, but just look at his damn eyes. How can he not oversee stuff with those things looking at you? Suddenly I have a hat! Uh, you definitely do, buddy. Oh, someone please help. Alright, so here we are in the realm. Now, we do start off with a bit of hand culture, but not a lot. We're gonna have to spread this far and wide. Uh, we also are kind of stuck between a big kingdom to the north and a lot of small states to the south, so we're gonna try, you know, do a bit of conquest down here and maybe reach India. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I'm haunted by my demon spaghetti. Uh, we also want to find ourselves a nice Han wife. Hopefully one with either good stewardship or good martial. None have good. Okay, what about learning? You're a bit too old for me, though. Uh, I guess you're all right. Um, uh, you'll do. Uh, you give me minus 200 prestige, but prestige mestige, am I right? And I went for the stewardship simply for the fact we won't have to worry about collecting taxes. We can just go ahead and start promoting culture in our provinces to get Han nice and spread. Oh, there you go. I'm now head of the Han culture. And you might think there's not actually much to it, but alas. Because if you actually do this pretty early on, you do get yourself special archers, which are pretty pretty cool, right? Uh, it's interesting that they actually put something in for hand culture, considering it's so small. I mean, it, it is also literally a repeating crossbow. We get the Chuko Nu, which is pretty cool. Uh, you may be wondering why we started so late, but um, obviously this is a mega campaign. Can't be going on too long, and also, I don't really like the early game of CK3. <laughs> oh, so our special archers are actually way better, so we're gonna get these guys recruited immediately, and hopefully they help us with these fights. Seriously? You're immediately sick. I think it actually does make sense looking at you. I don't know how you were bored. Oh, finally, you're much better. And you found a cool little hat. Gotta give it to you, buddy. Now, we could swear filthy up here, but I don't know if I want to do that just yet. I may do it if he does start eyeing me up and want to declare war and absorb me because he does want my duchy. So we may do that as a last resort, but for now I kind of want to try and expand. I am trying to sway him at the moment though. We are visiting every weekend and um... I'm assuming he likes me, considering he's gone up to 20, or maybe he just likes to laugh at my face. Either way, clearly I bring <laughs> joy to this man's life. Oh, I bring a lot of joy to his life. He loves me. Look at that, 62. Nice, we double swayed him. He's loving my stupid little face. Ah, good. My wife is pregnant, which is uh, an excellent thing, because if it's, a, if it's female, we can probably marry her up here, hopefully, get us an alliance, or if it's a son, we can get ourselves a nice strong heir. Oh, it is a daughter. Well, you shall hopefully live a long life. I, I A lot of children die in this game. Oh, pregnant again. I guess I don't have a lot to do around at the moment, so I'm just doing you. There we go, we got our first son, and he's called Anki, and he will be a strong ruler one day, unless you die, because I covered this a second ago, a lot of children die. There we go, and we're going to make him a strong martial man. He's going to do a lot of our conquering come late. I'm going to hand him over a concubine too, hopefully that makes him very, he's very happy. He took his clothes off. Oh wait, why'd he take his clothes off? There we go, we got our first alliance by marrying our daughter off, or saying betrothing our daughter off to this man who's probably not going to live long enough for them to actually get married, which is fine with me. Oh, I guess we can have female heirs. That's pretty cool. So she is also our heir, and they were married matrilineally, so that does not 
matter. So I guess we'll also make you a strong conqueror. Oh, it's looking good already. Our daughter's gonna get ambitious, and she should be ambitious. It also could definitely tell you my daughter can say that much. I mean, only one man could father a child with such a oblong shaped head. I just checked. We have a high chance of murdering the king up here, which might throw them into a bit of disarray. Also, I think this guy might like me a bit more. Uh, in the long run, that is. At the moment, he doesn't like me that much, but I'll just, uh, I'll walk in, I'll tell a funny joke, he'll ignore it and laugh at my face. Oh, yeah, we, we definitely killed him. And you do like me, but you still want my ducky. You can't have my ducky. All right, we're gonna go ahead and have a war with these guys. Uh, it's not really worth it just for this one province, but I just wanna do a bit of fighting. Oh, she came of age and became a brilliant strategist and unyielding defender. I like the sound of that one. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely my child. Unsurprisingly, your betrothal did not go through because he died, and I am gonna have to find you a husband, but uh, I'm not too sure who that's gonna be. Never mind. Huang is Herculean and I'm on board. There we go. Nothing crazy, but we have grown for the first time in for, well, forever. We've never grown before. This rule has my wife lost an eye. <laughs> Where'd you leave it? Thankfully, the kingdom in the north has been um, in a bit of disarray since Shang got his hands on it, which was fine. That gives us more time to actually get settled over here and get strong. Oh, so my daughter has already had a son with Huang, and I let him be called Huang because he got hail, which is good. He's gonna be grown to a big, strong man. Next, we kind of want to move against this little kingdom down here, the petty kingdom of Malho, to try and grow a bit more, especially considering what the hell's going on up here. And our army is getting up there. We now have 2.7k, and I am mostly spending our money on developing the realm. I shall be known as Shang the Builder. Or, or also, Shang the Ugly, it could go either way. I love the fact my daughter is actually now leading the army to that is pretty cool. A province under our belt. Oh, uh... Found a dwarf. God, she birthed another one, and this one's actually robust. They're just getting more powerful. Hey, my daughter and her husband both lost their eyes to- Who is stealing the eyes in my kingdom? <laughs> Wife just died. So I'm not too interested in uh, having any more kids, so I picked a lady who, um... Uh, won't give me any kids. So our conquests have garnered a bit of land, but we are now getting quite old and quite unhealthy, which isn't that surprising considering I'm a giant tic-tac of a man. But our daughter, I think, is very eager to continue our conquests. Very eager. I think it's definitely time we rename our duchy from Shan Zhao to Shang Zhao. So now that we've researched heraldry, we can actually move to high partition which means our land will be split a bit more biasly to our main heir, which is our daughter. Our son will still get some of the land, but that's fine. He's a pretty cool chap. Very much like his father. Oh, now this is going to be a gem in my crown. Oh, do we have quite the army at this point, too. This is uh, a lot of troops, which uh, I hope I still have by the time my daughter takes over, but probably not. There we go. We just got a lot bigger. Oh, Lord. And we also just got a whole set of vassals. We haven't had any up until this point. It's all just been directly ruled by Shang, so this is going to be a bit interesting to deal with. Actually, I think I got myself a better idea. There we go. King Shang. I think I'll give it a, a bit of a better name to Shang Zhao after the man who founded it. There we go. Also set my son up down there as the Duke just to um, take a bit of the land. And he is a cool ruler, I suppose. I mean, I don't have to worry about him because he loves me so much. Uh, my, my daughter might have to worry about that at some point, though. But we'll get to that. <laughs> Speaking of which, before I go, I must admit, I took all the eyeballs! Runs in, forms his own kingdom, refuses to elaborate, dies. Thankfully, our brother does not want to kill us, which is great. Uh, we are now split between the both of us in the same kingdom, but we have more conquering to do. Uh, we do have two heirs, which is good, although one of them is shy, and that is our actual heir. And I'm not too sure I'm happy with that one. And this guy's compassionate, are you kidding me? 
We're supposed to be conquering the world. Really? Okay, somebody's already trying to murder me. Well, well, well. Found out who it was. I have, I have no idea who it is, but I can challenge them to a fight, but I'm missing the prestige. Maybe I should get some and beat her up. Let's see if we die. She, um, she beat me up. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Hello? Hopefully it died with him. Let's find out why exactly my son and heir, Prince Huang of Shang Zhao, is currently in prison and disfigured. Well, we lived a pretty good life. Unfortunately, we are now in prison. <laughs> hey, whatever. Let me out of here. I've got a country to rule. Oh, my wife is actually the, uh, the in charge of the duchy down here. I guess, uh, my uncle. Yep, my uncle. He died. Problem with Huang is he is shy though, which makes talking to people a bit awkward. Although the the mask, um, well that doesn't help either. <laughs> my wife absolutely hates me too. <laughs> my wife is also my rival. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but uh, this just ain't quite working out. Really, I'm gonna go separate ways. Then I'm gonna start smooching up with the queen over here and see if I can't uh, get some friendly relations going. Finally, never mind. Huang died. But this ruler, I feel like, is gonna be a bit different. Which is funny because she's not actually the military one. She, she's the insightful thinker of the family. Oh, damn, I got a lot of kids. I got too many kids. Oh god. And there's more coming. Oh man, we are getting quite big. Shang Zhao is spreading like a plague. Which is funny, because quite a few plagues have spread in me. Seriously? There's still room in the oven? <laughs> how how fertile are you? My my husband is cheating on me with my own mother. Really? Seriously, dude? <laughs> So in the wound, he also just got me pregnant. Great! Only a little immoral to orchestrate the murder of your mom, uh, because she banged your husband. But she also did bang my husband. She, um, she died of old age, and I inherit her titles. <laughs> okay, sure. That's what you get, mother, for being just too alike me. There we go, now I've put my son in control down here. Hopefully he doesn't bang my husband, which is a high probability that he might. We've had a few splendid years over here in the kingdom. We've grown quite large, but I've noticed there's a bit of a threat to the north. Not too sure who this self-described Great Khan might be, but uh, should I be worried? Dead, but uh, the Great Khan still pass on to his son, so uh, I'm not too sure if we're out of the water yet. Oh, after much conquering and many lands brought under the hand of fist, Shang Zhao has finally decided to form itself into his empire. Uh, not under the best of leaders, but he is a great man, an empire builder, and also hale, apparently. Also likes to slap himself. But now that we've formed an empire and we're keeping an eye up north, I also want to reform the faith, as ours isn't really, um... It's terrible. It's gonna me down a fame level, but it is gonna be worth it. Right, it's our first push into India. You didn't last too long into the push into India. You died literally after I said that. Nice. Oh, I gotta say, uh, I was thinking that the, <laughs> the Mongol invasion might go a bit better than it did. I was kind of hoping this would be a, a big fight, but no, they are most certainly dying. We're gonna have to worry too much about the Khan. Uh, he still has Great Khan. He might come back. He's got a load more troops now. <laughs> Or oh, he might just die. Yep. That did not last long, did it? <laughs> there's, there's, there's the Mongol Empire. Oh, well. We'll show them exactly how it's done under the name of Shang. Now, we may have pushed a little bit into India, but I have a taste for terrain that's not mountainous, snowy, and horrible. And if the Khan's gonna let me down, someone's gonna have to start pillaging. Cowards are running from me like scared mice. Yeah. Yes, Shang Fury. Ah, you smell that? That's the sea. We've definitely never smelt that before where we've come from. And what better way to celebrate than creating our new religion based off the man who started it all. Except this one's not gonna be so peaceful. And no better time to declare myself as head of the fate. Ha <laughs> ha!
Or a more brought under the fold of the great Shang Empire. The rest of the world, other than a few interesting things, did this happen last time? I think kind of just looks incredibly messy. How this is going to work in EU4, but it's going to be incredibly interesting to see, I suppose. How great you shall look upon my crown. Oh, it was definitely a costly war, but I think the reward... <laughs> okay, yeah, that's nice. Oh, and I can consecrate the Shang bloodline. Nice. For our big conquest of India, we are probably uh, done here. Time two is the great man himself, the conqueror of India, the reformer of the fate has died and we are now an empress. Well, I think we've done more than enough damage in Shang Zhao. Uh, from a fledgling little state over here, we've managed to conquer quite a bit of land and forge out an empire for ourselves. Of course, uh, a lot of this land up here won't be too useful in EU4, which is why I moved down to India. Uh, I will be changing a few things about our country when we convert, but you'll be seeing that in the next episode. The spread hand culture from what was in two little provinces to quite a few little states across, even some in India now, which is pretty cool. And obviously our brand new religion of Shang <laughs> Shanganism, <laughs> it's spreading like wildfire. Our family tree is a spectacle and a damn half. Just look at all of this. I just want to say that wasn't even expanded. I, I have to actually click the expand button over here to get to where we started. There he is. King Shang, we started all the way over here and oh my god, did things get complicated. Uh, the family tree for this is just insane. We have so many children, so many different like little branches. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's so large. Look at it. Uh, it's safe to say we we made an impact on the world. Who's actually still in control of provinces still? Uh, a lot of these people are still dukes or kings even in some places. And that is kind of ridiculous. The of Han has spread far and wide and we have left a impact upon this world. More so than some other people who are supposed to have a much bigger impact. Looking at you, Mongol Empire. Actually, if you are new to the mega campaigns, we do do a little bit of cleanup just to make things a bit easier for the AI to handle in the next games. But, um... Andalusia owns Northern England. I'm not changing that. That's staying. So same with big whales. We gotta make whales big. That's great. Yeah, it's gonna be a very interesting mega campaign, and I think it's time we move over to EU4 and continue the damage. Jess, thank you everyone for watching. If you wanna keep supporting the channel, feel free to hit the like and the subscribe button down below, and I'm gonna catch you all in the next. Ah. Well, 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 the pain continues. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second episode of Mega Campaign 2021. In our first little episode in uh, Crusader Kings 3, we played as the Shang Zhao and created our small little dynasty of a small Chinese faction and made a pretty interesting empire. Also made... <laughs> One hell of a disgusting first king. It's alright, Chang. You, you did all you had to do, and now, now we've finally got something worthwhile. And I'm sure you're all very interested to see exactly what came out of the conversion. And uh, for once, I didn't actually have to change that much. Uh, in fact, if you just look at Russia and just all of Central Asia... I blame the Mongolians and their failure to make an empire. But yes, this is the mega campaign where we go from CK3 all the way to Hearts of Iron 4 through Victoria 2 and EU4. Which, um, is all on the same save, if you couldn't have guessed. Yeah, Europe's looking pretty interesting. We already have a unified Italy and a pretty big and powerful France. And, uh... I don't, I really don't know what to say about the UK and the British Isles because, well, <laughs> Wales and also Andalusia. I just, it's, it's going to be an interesting Europe, that's for darn sure. Uh, once again, I'll be leaving the converters down below. If you guys want to do your own mega campaign, feel free to do so. If you've never really played one of the Paradox games that are in this series, it might be a nice time to go ahead and try it or... Maybe not, you might just explode your empire you've worked so hard on in Victoria too. But yes, the moment of truth 
How exactly is Shang Zhao looking? Well, Shang Zhao's looking split in half? That's right, since there was over a hundred years between CK3 where we left off and E4, things have got a little interesting. Because our great empire has split between what was the northern realm where we originally started and now our new southern Indian lands. In fact, there was an entire split between our dynasty, between the Han Bolos and now just the original Han. Obviously, as a Chinese faction, we do have a little option over here to take the Mandate of Heaven, as we are still Chinese culture, and that Chinese culture has actually spread now into India. And obviously, our great religion of Shangist, which is mostly just a pretty religious way to say we're a warmongering horde. But we'll have to see if we'll ever reunite the two kingdoms into one, or just simply have our expectations stuck in India, and maybe say goodbye to China once and for all. But for now, let's get into it, eh? So, one of the big problems we are going to have is that a lot of this land still does not believe in our religion, and also is not the correct culture. Also, uh, the empire's not feeling too profitable these days. <laughs> and also, apparently, we've forgotten what India looks like, even though we still own a part over here that I didn't even realize. Oh, I gotta say that the Shanghai's religion, with that aggressive expansion impact, is actually pretty good, and also kind of makes sense, considering I put every single warmongering thing on it. The only bad thing is the local missionary shrimp minus two. That is going to be a problem. We may actually have to go religious ideas, which uh, I wasn't planning on doing. Yep, going to be uh, a little bit of unrest, I imagine, for our first few years in EU4 today. When will you people learn that Chang was a great man? He just had weird lips. Well, looks like we've already been declared war on, which I wasn't expecting, but I guess we're gonna have to fight. You may be asking, <laughs> was it worth it? No, 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 it wasn't. Ihar also declared war on me, and I did get a couple promises off them, which I was planning to do anyway. These guys weren't that difficult, but um, these guys... Oh, they kept spamming out units. I love it, you four, man. I sure can't get enough of this game. Shang Empire is just not feeling too good, despite how good it looks. So I'm not making much money. Everybody in my land hates me, and all of my neighbors hate me more. I don't doubt that anyone declares war on me right now. Uh, I am Kablamo screwed. I no longer have any manpower. All we need to focus on right now is making some friends, because surviving is going to be a tough cookie at the moment. Uh, seems our uh, northern brother up here, actually, the people want to come back to my empire, which is kind of sad, really, because it sucks down here. I think, you know, the development and trade in India is pretty crazy. How can you, uh, how can you not make much money? And that's because in the CK3 converter, you actually have the option to translate what the development was in CK3 in the provinces, so it, uh, makes a bit more sense, and obviously... Yeah, it's not looking too good. I mean, overall the land's not bad, but um, it's definitely not base EU4 good. I have been devving up our capital just a little bit, just to try and help with the excess points I have, but um... Not helping. <laughs> I think Big Papa Ming might finally be done with our shit, apparently, because they're digging out the Ching Hai. And that is another reason that I did split the Empire in two, is that um, I don't think it would have been that interesting if I just immediately died to the Ming, which has, uh, say, a bit more development than me. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, decent. Not, don't care. Good. Eh. Uh, Okay, this kind of sucks. It's gonna be risky, as you know, picking the first idea is always hard, but, uh, you know what? I think we're gonna have to do it. Espionage ideas it is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't hate myself that much. Uh, I'm stuck between innovation and economic. I think we're gonna do economic, but I also really want innovative. Uh, what do I do? We're gonna get economic. Okay, I'm no, like, E4 meta guy, but I think this will help us in the long run. We shall see. We got ourselves a new monarch. The Empress has passed, but, uh, Geiko, who is her son, I assume, is actually... Oh, he's just because his mother. You know what I mean? I really want to go ahead and just keep us on it. Extra friendly terms, so please do not come over here and just destroy me. Uh, I think for our first son, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and name them after the great man himself. 
Please do not let us down. Hopefully while we recover from that first war, looks like everyone in India is fighting each other. So uh, while that is good for us at the moment, they are also getting more powerful and will be a problem for us later on. Oh my gosh. Those gold dang separatists. Of course, the court in Changzhou in India has no interest in heading back north. I think it will be pretty good for us to have a small vassal over there concerning the Qinghai doesn't seem that stable. Whilst it might have been our ancestral homeland, it did kind of suck balls. And whilst I did manage to get myself an alliance with our homeland, the Chinese Ming, um, I don't know how long that'll last. And again, I don't want to be too close to them. Yep, they just broke their alliance with me, and now they hate me. Whilst we're in somewhat of a stable position, I say stable, we're gonna have constant revolts per, um, for a pretty long time because of just how intolerant I made the Shang faith it, um, it's not too happy of even. I think it's finally time we link up our western lands with our eastern lands. And thank god my allies actually want to help me. Also, we went ahead and brought along some of our famous Chinese gunpowder. Here we go. Not a lot of expansion, but just enough for us to reach our western lands, which means the endless revolts will be a little bit easier to deal with. Oh, I have finally discovered the world. Let's have a little gander. Well, um... Oh, Jerusalem died. <laughs> Egypt is looking pretty good. For a second, I thought the Byzantines were holding on quite well over here, but that's Armenia. Armenia big. Oh, it's not getting any better up here, is it? I don't think we're going to have a Russia in this game, but we will have a massive Estonia. And Europe is... Italy? Oh, wow. We are going to have a powerful France and Italy. That is for damn sure. And... Danish, Western Europe, and... Is that France? France is up here, too? Okay, I'm scared of you, France. Uh, Spain is still trying to figure out who will be called Spain. Uh, Andalusia is still the biggest party here, and they still own their stuff up here, but unfortunately, Wales has been anglified. Yeah, the world is looking pretty interesting, that's for damn sure. The mess in Central Europe, though. <laughs> I, that ain't getting fixed anytime soon. Uh, the Qinghai have unfortunately passed into the other dimension, and their land just keeps flipping to the Sang now, who are my puppets, so I'm not complaining. Uh, still worried about Big Brother Ming, though, and uh, we haven't done any expanding, really. We're just sitting here, haven't had a few revolts in a while which is pretty good and we're just getting powerful you know i think it might be time for the great push south things have been too stable in chiang Zhao for a while that i'm getting uncomfortable yes yes that's much better i feel way more comfortable with all of these revolts about to pop up well the emperor died mid-war which isn't great and uh we do have shang now although he is currently under regency this isn't the original shang by the way original shang died did get lucky and get another one though, and uh, that's pretty impressive considering our last ruler was like 70 years old. Let's um, let's try not to explode, shall we, after that? Doing a bit more invading down here, what I find quite hilarious is the fact um, that this little state down here is actually converted to Shangism, which um, <laughs> it's kind of weird any other state believing in this, but sure, why not? Things are actually getting cleaned up in Europe right about now, and the Reformation is kicking off, and it it hasn't really taken much hold just yet, but maybe, maybe it'll still kick up a little bit. Uh, also, somehow Aragon just won the, the Iberian Battle Royale, but now they're getting taken out by France, okay? Can't have anything in Iberia. Does feel a little bit wrong to destroy someone with the same religion as me, but also at the same time, you're following a religion about a man? Who had funny lips. That just says more about you than it does me, buddy. Because at least I'm related to him. I'm wondering where the enemy was. And, um... Well, they're all up here. Uh, I guess we're, we're having a siege off, eh? Oh, well, uh... There goes the neighborhood, eh, Byzantines? You know, just because I always forget to do it. Golden era. Why not? We're gonna pop it. Because we're looking... All right, I suppose. Uh, I mean, all right for us is just not constantly revolting, which is um, has been a problem in the past. I've got to say for the Shang Zhao nation. Oh god, I realise I had enough influence to uh, puppet these small little nations up here, <laughs> and I just looked over, and we've got some uh, Shang zealots that just siege these guys down. And I'm yep, I'm assuming just switched them over. <laughs> we really did buff the worst religion into this world. <laughs> so this land reflipped over to me, and it's making me think that maybe. 
Finally, we need to have a word with the Ming. The Chinese court in India has decided that the old world and our emperor has been a bit of a naughty boy. You see, we are a self-proclaimed emperor in India, and we are Chinese, and we still love the homeland, but realistically, our legitimacy is pretty waning when an emperor still sits on the throne. Which obviously leaves us with two dilemmas of will we conquer China or will we just destroy it to legitimize our own claims in India? Well, I guess we're going to have to find out. The banners have been called. And for the first time in over 500 years, the exiled Shang shall return to China. In the name of Shang, we shall pillage. It's time for the child emperor in Regency of China to realize that the true emperor has come home. He simply went to the gas station for 500 years and forgot to check back in. Well, with the sacking of Beijing, the peace has been settled. The Ming will accept that we are the true emperor in China. <sighs> Look at that. Shang came from nothing, and now he is the Emperor of China. Well, his bloodline is, is currently Gui Kong II of Han that is currently ruling the dynasty, but you know what I mean. Oh, I think we well and truly blew up China. That's right, we're creating new China over here in the West. Well, you may have noticed that there is a big power in India other than me, which is the Dali Wise. The, the Dali Way. Delhi. It's Delhi, okay? And we need to take them down at some point, but they have quite a few allies, which, uh... Oh, hopefully we can deal with. Oh, for us to keep a solid claim on the Emperorship of China, we will have to hold a few select cities. We'll need Canton, Nanjing, and Beijing. Otherwise, just like the child emperor before us, we'll start to be laughed at quite heavily. Welcome home. Although, can you really say that if your only claim for it to be home was you had one ancestor over 500 years ago that used to live here that was actually kicked out of there for looking too ugly? Uh... Probably not, but it's a real ugly duckling story. There's been a lot of cursed stuff in this playthrough so far, but Prussia, not just any Prussia forming and then going east, Orthodox Prussia. Doesn't stop there. Orthodox Polish Prussia. Gonna be a very interesting Vic 2 game, that is for damn sure. Also, I've never heard of Prufenian before, but I like it. We captured the last city we need, which is Beijing, which means our rule as the Emperor of China for now is definitely cemented. One thing I want to do though before we convert to Vic 2 is actually finish my conquest of India, which um, there's not a lot left now, it's just gonna take a bit of patience. Just continuing my conquest of India, which has led me at war with the Persian Empire, not to be mistaken for Persia, which is inside the Persian Empire, but not a part of the Persian Empire. Persia is independent from Persia. Is that confusing for you? I haven't checked too much into the Americas. I know it's kind of a bit uh, chaotic over here with the uh, latest DLC because the natives just seem a bit too powerful. And uh, yeah, it's not a lot of colonizing has gone on except in Brazil, which is also broken free. Oh, so is uh, Argentina too. Argentina's broken free. Uh, the natives are still running wild over here and probably will be until the end of the game. Uh, still can't see North America, but that looks like Andalusia to me. I don't know though. We'll find out a some point it'll be one hell of a surprise i imagine oh also yeah okay so uh well that that is horrifying first france you are too powerful aragon's still all right and leon is taking over portugal andalusia's still here but uh what i noticed is that castile's been kicked out from over here uh they used to be over there but uh not anymore and uh Estonia, eh? <laughs> oh, Byzantines, you really did make it quite far, but, um, yeah, you're dead. This is so cursor. Uh, like, Greece has spawned in Constantinople, but also Austria is just chilling down here in the Balkans, too. Italy took all of Greece, and now they're getting revolt with such. What is going on? Also, I just want to point out that there is two nations in Croatia right now. There is lesser Croatia, the big large one here, and then there's greater Croatia. 
The smaller one. I don't think there'd be much in the way of Russia, but Ryazan's actually getting quite big down here now. And um, I think they just won a war with Prussia too and took a few provinces, so that is kind of something. I'll shout out to France for finding out I exist and then telling me no map can be a work of art as long as your nation is on it. Well, if we're talking about works of art, France ain't one of them. No, so France can't get any more monstrous than it already is and now taking out the Italians. Oh, the Enlightenment actually spawned in me. That is the first one that I've actually gotten. Just look at my little empire now. It's, uh, very enlightening. Uh, still there. I thought Austria would be kind of impressive, but, um... I didn't think they'd be this impressive. Oh, well, there goes Ryazan and Estonia to the Austrian horde. I do not like the balance of power in Europe. <laughs> Why is France so big and Austria just getting bigger? I was excited at the fact that uh, Ryazan, you know, we might actually get a Russia, but uh, they <laughs> they just got... I think they just lost a war to uh, Transoxania. <laughs> just, they just spat everything out. Oh my god. I didn't realize they must have had a PU over Britain. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I haven't looked at the new world in a while either. Um. <laughs> I die in my eyes. Oh, yeah, I just realized Malta has a colony over here too. Okay, <laughs> the knights went west. Oh, I um, guess I don't have to worry about this. I'm nowhere near Europe, but... I, 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 I'm just gonna look away. I can't look at it. I gotta say, though, the Shang has gone ahead and pretty much unified India and more at this point. We still have a lot of China, too, and, uh, I think I am gonna keep playing. Originally, I was gonna end around, like, 1750, but, um... I, I guess we're just gonna play it to the end just to see how crazy it can go. Uh, which means I am planning on taking more of China, but not for me, for my puppet, the King High. And uh, unfortunately, our dynasties are no longer linked to say I've gone to the zoo. But you know, I feel like it's kind of still important that we um, cement the power in China. Oh yeah, I just remembered I can hit this button and put the put a relative on the throne. There you go. We're back in control. So I think what I want to do in Victoria 2 is uh, have this China released. So, um, you know, bit of RP. There we go. By the power of Shang. Kind of sad that all the Byzantines have left now is Cyprus and just random province up here. <laughs> I have never been sadder than the, the moment that the great Estonian Empire finally collapsed. Uh, look, Prussia's back and getting bigger, and Muscovy's been spat out. This whole area just basically might as well have not changed. I am happy to report, though, that Persia has finally been absorbed into Persia. All right, there's something I should probably tell you. It's uh, been 40 years, and for that whole time, I may or may not have been feeding Muscovy a lot of money and also allying them and helping them out in every single war. Uh, and, and let's just say, I may have created a, a Russia out of pretty much nothing. Uh, I didn't want to really get this involved, but I, I'm I'm in too deep to say no now. Yeah, Russia, <laughs> you know, help keep those winters, you know, a little bit warmer. And by uh, burn the money, I mean just maybe put it in, the, in a cannon and shoot it in the general direction of an Austrian man. Yeah, I don't think any amount of money is going to stop you against the Austrians, though. I'm going to be real with you, Russia. And uh, it takes forever for me to get my armies over there. And I've already lost, like, two just because I get uh, a little bit outstacked. Uh, finally got my troops over here. And uh, Russia peaced out. That was great. Now you get to walk all the way home. <laughs> Russia broke their alliance with me. And then immediately got invaded by the Austrians! I have done so damn much for you! God, did Austria just splurt 1500 countries out of Russia? Yes, they definitely did! Oh, 1812, I think this was the perfect time to put this to rest. The mighty Shang Empire has definitely laid complete control over the subcontinent over here and past it. We also have all of China under our hold in our puppet, the King Hai, which I think might get 
get a bit turbulent in Victoria 2 as uh, we've definitely left them with quite a bit of power. We still hold our mandate though and only just in 1812, I am not kidding you, we have been converting the entire goddamn time have I finally managed to convert all of India, almost. There's like a couple provinces still alive. The Great Shang religion has control all over India and China now. We are definitely um, spreading our wings. Uh, of course, now that we do move into games like Victoria 2 and Hoi 4, though, that is completely... <laughs> it means nothing, because religion it just, it has no effect in those games. But I wanted to leave it off with a bang, eh? since it's uh, the last time we're really going to see it much. There it is. Shang has actually taken hold and we have conquered pretty much all of Asia with it. As for the religion in the rest of the world, uh, Islam for a long time did not do too well, but recently uh, Yemen actually came out of nowhere and finally kicked the uh, the Egyptians out, who were the crusader state there, and uh, it's kind of coming back. Africa, uh, with the converter, it actually gets rid of most of the African nations, so for the most part we don't really need to worry. Uh, Castile did get the Cape, which is where they are. I was wondering for a while where they had ran to because they still own New Castile and uh, don't own anything. In oh, wait, no, they are back in the mainland somehow. Uh, the New World is you're gonna need a little bit of fixing. <laughs> South America, I mean, the Incans are pretty cool. You see, the Incans have actually taken over a lot of South America down here, and Brazil is also <laughs> too big. Uh, Asia, for the most part, I realized. Uh, I, France has all of this. <laughs> they they got away pretty scarf free, because I'm assuming Britain might have colonized a whole bunch of this too, and then they, uh, they obviously ate them up, so that was just... I, I still don't know how I'm going to deal with this. Uh, I'm obviously going to clean the map up like I always do just for a little bit by uh, taking away small nations that... Uh, if, if you always ask, why do I clean up the map and don't leave like this small nation over here, the Barosuki? Uh, that's because the AI will never kill them. That nation will just sit there for the rest of the game. It won't grow, it won't ever move, it'll just sit there because the AI does not know how to deal with it in Victoria 2 or Hoi 4. And uh, considering there are so many small nations, it does end up lagging like the game when you get to Hoi 4 because it's just a pointless, useless tag. So we do usually clean the map up a little bit. Uh, obviously, it usually goes to um, whoever is the biggest in the region. So I wouldn't get rid of Transoxania exactly, but I would give like this small nation to Russia. It's nothing crazy. It makes the game better. You see bigger wars, blah, blah, blah. Uh, same goes with North America. I'm obviously not going to touch cool stuff like this. You have the Comanche Federation. That's not going to, that's going to stay there because that's actually pretty cool but things like the navajo uh the navajo unfortunately <laughs> might go <laughs> british louisiana i i don't know what i'm gonna do with british louisiana it's gonna be interesting to say the least um as for europe uh i i i <laughs> I'm glad I'm not there. But yes, the mighty Shang Empire shall be moving to Victoria 2, where strife, revolution, and economics are about to hit us pretty hard. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe button down below to continue the journey. And, uh, oh, I am very interesting to see how this comes out. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mega Campaign 2021. How is everybody doing? Are you into the Christmas spirit, or do you not believe in Christmas? Where do you think all the presents come from, huh? You don't think Santa's real? And today we've made it to Victoria 2, where the mighty Shang Empire shall reign supreme. Or potentially crash and burn, like um, most nations in Victoria 2. It's really 50 50. I hope you've all been enjoying the Mega Campaign so far and I certainly enjoyed making it, so if you have been enjoying it, feel free to hit the like down below. Hit the subscribe button to carry on the journey. There's only one more game left after this, and that's Heart of Iron 4. Now, I'm sure you're all very interested to see the game, but first off, I need to give a big shout out to the E4 Vic 2 converter, because they've actually made a new feature where you convert the game actually into HPM, which is the mod I always play. And if you're new to Vic 2, and you don't know what HPM is, or GFM, or any of the other big mods, uh, 
um, they they make the game way more enjoyable and way better to play. So personally, I gotta give another big shout out to the converters. I'll leave them all linked down below. So if you guys wanna go ahead and gift them some love from me, please do so because they really, really put a lot of work into these and they make all of this possible. Without any further ado, shall we look at how the world has turned out? <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. The world is looking disgusting, I gotta say it. Uh, thankfully, we aren't situated in Europe, but as you can see already from how it's going in Europe, it's pretty messy. Now, to actually kind of make Europe a bit less of a, um, well, two power power. Uh, I did go ahead and release France's PUs and the puppets of them. So they have England up here, they have Denmark, and they have Catalonia down here, or Gironi. For <laughs> Gironi. Hey, why you gotta be such a Gironi? But either way, France is a damn powerhouse. That is for darn sure. They still have Scotland, and it looks like they're trying to reconquer Ireland already. If some wars do convert over from the uh, the past game. And then obviously we have Austria. Gosh darn Austria. And Italy, which is just been torn to shreds by France and Austria. They're not looking too good. Uh, we also have Prussia and the newly formed Russian Empire, which um, definitely formed on its own and didn't require <laughs> a few million Chinese troops to help <laughs> to keep it sorted. And overall, we also have the Lusatians up here. I'm assuming these are the one German power that's still around, other than the small states that are still left from the HRE. And uh, they also own some of the uh, Scandinavia for some reason. It, it makes no sense. I don't want it to make sense, okay? I don't think that's what we're gonna have to worry about. What we're gonna have to worry about is Austria, France, and Italy. It's all right. You thought Europe was bad? Well, look at North America. I, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, Andalusia, still around though. They've got their, their colony, the Oregon ca country up here. And we have normal Andalusia, which still owns actual land here. Uh, I just, I have no... No, I, sh I, I don't even know what to say. It's probably the messiest mega campaign yet. Uh, I didn't want to clean it up too much just because uh, I kind of just wanted to see what would happen if we just leave it as it is. And France, again, has the colonial foothold because they also own Castile still. Castile still. Cast they still own Castile. They s they're Castilling still, they still still. They, they also own all of the damn Pacific too. They're colonizing Indonesia and all spoilers up there. Woo! And then, of course, we have the Empire of Shang. As you can see, we are looking pretty good. We have all of China under our Eastern Shangzhou Empire, which is our client state. And then we also have ourselves, the Empire of Shang. Uh, obviously, if you know a lot about Victoria 2, uh, this setup is incredibly powerful in Victoria 2. Not so much in Hoi 4, I imagine, but uh, in Victoria 2, I have a lot of population, a lot of goods, and we're probably way too overpowered, which is why I can justify also owning all of China directly, other than the crown lands over here, which is also a bit too much. I think this is without a doubt the most powerful we've ever been in a mega campaign, but uh, also probably the most fun I've had so far in a mega campaign just because it's been such a uh, interesting game. And obviously to our west we have the Persians who uh, no longer have Persia inside of them. It's just Persia. And they're pretty big. Uh, we also have Egypt, which was, I think, Yemen. Yemen was the, like, only Muslim country still left from the Crusades. And they did manage to reconquest pretty much all of Arabia down here and into Egypt. So, I think they just reformed into Egypt through the uh, converter. Or they might have did it in EU4. I don't know. But either way, Egypt is back. And that is all she wrote. I am very ready to get in this game, see what we can do, and try to stabilize our empire. Here we are. The empire's looking good. Economically speaking, not so good. Now, Shang is the number one great power in the world, but that's mostly down to the fact we have a ridiculous amount of prestige at the start, and we have a high military count, which we both are going to have to delete some troops and also build an industry, uh, because we are actually not that far ahead ahead of the Austrians right now, who are already industrially ahead of us. We have no industry, and they have way more troops than us, which is quite scary. But hopefully, we won't have to worry too much about that. And as for the rest of the GPs, we have France, Italy, Russia, Aragon, 
the American Empire and Sweden. And technologically speaking, we uh, may have fallen behind our European counterparts just a little bit. And also, not a lot of people can read here. So I think for starters, we will just avoid war for a while. Oh, budget's not looking too good, but uh, we are gonna have to tariff our way up quite a bit here because we are gonna spend so much money on educating these people. Oh my god, that's <laughs> 1900 just to teach people to read. Now, we could reclaim the Mandate of Heaven and that would immediately turn us into China, which we aren't going to do because we are the Empire of Shang and also we kind of spent all of E4 doing that anyway. Okay, first things first, we are going to reform the military so to do that we are going to delete <laughs> pretty much all the military i've also gone ahead and given some more power to the chinese states by devolving them down to shanghai and we and the shun dynasty just so we don't have too much land to actually mediate over here and deal with as whilst we did spend most of our time in e4 reclaiming our mandate of heaven i think realistically the real power in the region will lead us back to india Okay, interestingly enough, just notice Iceland is a proletarian dictatorship in 1836? Not too sure how that one converted over. Oh yeah, I forgot, we're allied to the Russians, aren't we? What are you calling? I do not really want to go to war right now, Russia. And also, who art thou at war with exactly? Just the Prussians. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know if I want to do this. You know, I'll say yes for now, Russia, but this is your last one. I'm not helping past this. And surprising, a lot of our population is leaving for the new world. So they are going to be incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, and they'll keep leaving until we really do some reforms over here to make them want to stay. Economically speaking, uh, don't expect any money to be made for a while. It's gonna be pretty bad down here. Uh, looks like we've got a rebellion in the Shun Dynasty, our little vassal we put up over there, but realistically, there's nothing we can do. We're barely holding on monetarily, and I cannot afford to fight a war right now, so I'll catch you in a minute. So we've got enough for a reform, and we need to do a lot of reforms. Like, for number one, we still have slavery in the country, which is not cool. Uh, but first off, what we're gonna have to do is get a school system, get rid of child labor, so we can actually get some uh, people reading over here. Uh, people in Chiang ain't gonna make me no money if they can't read. Oh god, there's three people creating machine parts right now. Trieste, Gallery, and Australia. <laughs> and they are all there in demand, okay? Oh, so after uh, finally getting all our bureaucrats in our provinces all the way up to 100% in most places, we are now making money and we are somewhat stable. Not a lot of people leaving anymore, which is the main thing, because we're gonna need you to work at the factories. Uh, although occasionally the um the the money does go like that, but we we are making money for the most part, okay? And we are getting quite a few revolts, but uh nothing too crazy, especially compared to Europe, which is under constant revolt. Right now, Prussia is completely occupied by Russian patriots. And the Austrians, well, the Czechs just broke free from them. And Italy lost Serbia? Things aren't looking stable at all over here. Oh, except England, which has broke free from France because it's a great power and has invaded Ireland. Okay, even in bizarro old history world, you still just have to mess about in Ireland, don't you, England? That's probably one of the most stable places in the world right now is the New World, and uh, that's probably because they can't figure out how the hell to get around it? The borders are so confusing. Oh god, the ho the HRE itself just broke free from Prussia. I don't know what to make of that one. Oh, they got they got a lot of they got a lot of core cool territory left. Okay, sure thing, buddy, sure thing. Oh, we've got even more instability going on in China as our actual eastern half of our empire has just revolted. Uh, I think for now, though. We're not that interested. Uh, the Empire in the West is all that matters. Although, the least we can do is to strike and take control of the precious resources. A very, very important mine over here in Kunming that will make us a lot of money. God, dude, one damn war. And <laughs> they, they see their opportunity like vultures. So whilst our ambitions in China are no longer, I think it's very important that we keep Eastern Chang Zhao still weak. So we have 
taken control tactically of the precious material. Can't have these guys getting too powerful while we sit on the side there, but for now I think we'll just leave them to it. We shouldn't have to worry too much. And for the first time in a while, we're actually getting ourselves some positive population. Uh, no one wants to just leave our country. I mean, they are still leaving, just not as many as before. It's great here. We got factories now, we got rid of slavery, we've got a province mining gold? Come on! Oh god, yeah, the Austrians are just falling apart heavily. There goes Congress Poland. Now, they don't even have a military and they, they are mobilized, but uh, we'll see if the Austrians can retake this land. Oh, now that we're stable, people have jobs, uh, we are going to rebuild the military finally because these revolts, <laughs> when they happen, my armies have to go so far apart that it's uh, we're very spread thin. It's not too poggers, as you children would say. Um, okay, hurrah. I'm gonna be real with you. I am, no, <laughs> I'm not going over to Ethiopia right now. I think Aragon just reformed into Catalonia, which is interesting. I don't know if they get much, oh, they do, they do actually still have their cause, so they could fight uh, back for Spain at some point, we'll see. France isn't exactly in the best position right now, they've got their own revolts to deal with. Oh god, I think the HRE's just got bigger. That definitely looks like it's getting bigger. I don't even, I don't even know how I'm gonna deal with this or what's gonna come from this, but Prussia, get your stuff together! Oh, looks like the Austrians are trying to reconquer their uh, Czech land, but they are going up against Lusatia, which is the only big German power still left that isn't Austria. Yeah, it would be a shame if someone was to, uh, <laughs> give them 67 pounds a day. Just, uh, not a big fan of big Austria. We got the fourth war of Chinese reunification right now. There's actually a big power in Shanghai that is eating up a bit of the Chinese land over here, and look at them go. My god, they actually won. And I think Lusatia just got bigger, and, uh, the Czechs returned, well, I shouldn't say returned, they just reformed into Czechoslovakia. Which means they get more calls on Austria, which I like. Someone say, Fifth War of Chinese Reunification? Uh, Shanghai is popping off and I love it. Oh, we got ourselves a big war going on in Europe right now. We got the Austrian liberation of French Württemberg, and that is looking pretty menacing. Interesting alliance too. We got the Austrians and Russians in the Sudetenland against France, and I'm assuming all of its little uh, territories it holds. Oh, just saw uh, <laughs> something from hell just spawn over here. Yeah, that's the British Empire. Uh, I guess they sniped the uh, little lowlands there when France was at war, and now uh, we got the British Empire, which is interesting, I suppose. Just, uh, it's just not, not much of an empire, really. <laughs> so everyone's beating up the French right now, then, because the Italians are trying to get some land back, but uh, they got 88 troops, they got 181. We'll see if they can pull it off, eh? Sure, a uh, couple of pennies in your pocket might help. Oh, they actually managed to pull it off. Now, Italy doesn't look too bad. I mean, it looks horrendous still, but it doesn't look too bad. Oh, and the Prussians are beating up the Lusatians, who have no military. Do they lose their army to the Prussians? How did the Prussians come back? Oh, God, every time I look back, it just gets worse. What are you doing over here, America? You know, as a fellow Shang, I gotta say, Shanghai, I like the way you're doing things, so I'm gonna try to get you my sphere. Oh, wait. <laughs> never mind, we're never getting them in our sphere. Their population is way too big. Oh, well, we'll see what becomes of you, eh? No, I think to secure our influence and trade with the West, uh, we we have decided to put some money down for a cool little canal. And uh, I do have quite the stockpile of money, so might as well spend it. Oh god, there's just a constant state of warfare going on in Europe uh, for the most part, as everyone is trying to <laughs> sort the borders out. Don't make Shang come over there, we've had quite the history of warfare. Well, for the past 50 years, we've just been shooting ourselves trying to stabilize this mess. Oh my god, Shanghai. Shanghai is going wild. Should I be worried? <laughs> oh, no. Nah. You're, uh, you're really embracing your Shang there, Shanghai. I'm not too sure if I like it. Oh, uh, looks like Malaysia is making a break for freedom from us, which, um, oh, uh, <laughs> 
Aggression! I think this is part of the converter that makes it so uh, colonies try to break away from their overlords. So, uh, yeah, I'll try and uh, put down the Malaysians. Yeah, it's uh, it's not going to be too hard. Don't worry about it. That's the Malaysians dealt with. Now it's back to our regularly scheduled program of another militant socialist revolt. Shout out Italy. They are looking like Italy. Just... <laughs> gonna crank my neck all the way. <laughs> time I come back here, the damn Czechoslovakians are just in a whole different position every time. What is this one? Uh, France is falling apart. Well, the French monarchy is no more. The Republic shall live long, I imagine. But this is France we're talking about. It'll probably be gone next week. Oh, yeah, you know what I said about it lasted forever? Well, proletarian dictatorship France now. Well, that's a very interesting American civil war. We have the free States of America, probably fed up with the whole <laughs> empire part of America. Uh, but they're also only limited up to here, in the New England area, which um, I don't think they're gonna win. Oh god, what the hell have I signed up for here? I, I gotta help my fellow Shang, I suppose. Um, I think it's time we stick our nose into European politics. Turn all states with core promises to the Holy Roman Empire. Why not? Our first aggressive expansion into Europe. Although, uh, it's not us actually expanding into Europe. Also our influence. Looks like the only resistance we'll be seeing today is the Austrian people themselves that have rose up to take Vienna. But, uh, I'm gonna have to get you guys to leave. Free where we go, we shouldn't be hearing about this new communism thing. Even though it's not that new. It was invented in like 1812 by a bunch of Icelandic people. But I don't like it. I don't know what this is gonna create but it's probably better than whatever is Europe right now. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> no longer Austria, just the HRE. Just like that, Austria is no more. Now, I'm not hoping that the HRE becomes some sort of power, but I am hoping it's even more unstable than Austria, and, I, well, it, it explodes. Very interesting. The American Empire is not doing too well right now. I've noticed that uh, the new American alliance has formed in the middle over here, and New England has popped back out. So, yeah, the American Empire is not looking too fresh. And also, California. California has formed. <laughs> Who exactly formed you guys? The Scottish formed you. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, um, that doesn't seem too right. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that might be broken. <laughs> oh, mama mia, it's a modern day renaissance, it keeps going up. Ah, uh, yeah, I found the culprit. I think they're trying to create Romania or Yugoslavia. It gives you a whole bunch of prestige. And, uh, also, yep, it's the Romania one. Uh, it gives you a lot of infamy. Okay, Italy. There we go, I just had to dab out quickly, fix that before it went catastrophic. I uh, removed the decision and fixed their infamy and prestige problems. By the way, they were up to like 700 in infamy. Well, you you know this world's messed up when you see Colombia being a great power. Uh, I, I ain't even sure how, other than the... Apparently your military score, Columbia. All right, that's uh, <laughs> I just I I whatever. Okay, Columbia sucks. Yeah, I'm not too sure if we were gonna get a world war in this game, considering everyone else but me is so damn weak. Hey, look, at Spain did form though. That's kind of cool, right? Right? The yeah, curse thing about that is Spain formed, but Castile still living down here in exile in <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> I just said about there not being a great war. Well, there's now potential for there to be a great war over something in America. Don't worry. I have Columbia. Oh my god. This is... No. Oh! Uh, I guess someone in the first Great War was... had a truce with someone else? Because we just immediately pieced out of the Great War. Should I be grateful? That the Great War was averted? <laughs> I, I don't know. To scratch any European affairs, I just realized that Shanghai is communist. <laughs> I have idly left my eyes onto Europe and not been paying attention to my own backyard where Shanghai has formed the CCP. Oh my god, look at them. This might be a problem. Uh, Eastern Shang is definitely no more and it has been replaced by a communist Parasite. And there's only one thing we can do here. Oh, the 
fighting is definitely bloody and definitely on our side, but still, this is a lot of troops to deal with. Gosh, 200,000 <laughs> people just died on their side in that battle. Yeesh. There's another 500,000 and two more battles. Okay, this is, uh, this is, <laughs> this is getting a bit out of hand. Fortunately, we are gonna have to piece the hell out and get out of here because that ended up pretty badly. Did take a couple promises, but for what it's worth, <laughs> they, they threw the horde at me then. That just, that was monstrous. They just went straight up to second great power, which is, so oh, that's kind of scary. I was busy dealing with this, um, that I failed to see this one. I don't want to know. Uh, oh, we've hit 1915, and I am very certain that there is not going to be any wars anytime soon that will turn into a great war. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've done enough as well, considering the disparity between our great power statuses here. Um, it's quite huge. Before we leave off the mega campaign, we're going to do a wee bit of expansion. Not a lot of places left to conquer in the world. All these nations down here have mostly turned to civilized, so it's not really worth doing anymore. But uh, the Philippines broke free from France, so I thought I'd hop on there. And also, no one colonized Madagascar, so I guess I'm here too. Wait a second, something interesting's going on in here. Uh, I think the HRE might just get dismantled. And I just got called into a war of the, the liberation of Cal- Okay, sure, why not? Okay, let's do it. It's definitely the worst place we could have got involved in. <laughs> uh, I realize these guys were also still uncivilized, so I guess I'm gonna get here too. Thankfully, I think it looks like we're fine over here. It's just mobilized troops now, so we should be able to beat them back. I've destroyed so many armies, but they just keep bringing more and more troops. But I think I've beaten them back. Just another 60,000 appear out of nowhere. Stop piecing out their allies. This will probably make it a little bit more bearable. They pieced out uh, California, which means we only have Yucatan in the war now, which just unseized their entire country. Hey, the counteroffensive begins. Wait, how am I still at War of California, though. Was it just America? Oh, America separate piece out of the war. Okay, that makes sense. Well, don't worry, I'm still fighting the good fight. Oh, that was actually uh, a lot quicker than I thought it would be. And America's kind of looking better. Still looking pretty bad. I'm also still at war with these guys down here trying to carve out my own South American colony. There you go. That is cut. Oh, I also did not check out the HR. No. I'm just not gonna look at it. Uh, so I guess after the major defeat, um, <laughs> it just exploded. <laughs> Germany is just never gonna be a thing, is it? Oh, 1920, and I think realistically, this is probably where we should end it for Victoria 2 after the great piece of Europe. Great piece of summing call, right? Uh, the Empire of Shang did not do too much expanding in Victoria 2. We did take, uh, some securing points in China, which was for the best, considering the monster that has been spawned from it. And we did a little bit of colonizing in the Philippines, which is now our little puppet state down here. Uh, we didn't get involved in Africa too much, except Madagascar, which is also our puppet. And then at the very end, we, uh, made a presence in South America, just so we could help our allies, the Kingdom of America, which um, really did not do too well this game. What exactly is going to go in on Hoi 4? I have no idea though. We'll have to clean up a bit of the mess, um, just because having a Bulgaria inside of the HRE, that, that's uh, never, it's terrible. And we'll try to make a interesting scenario for a world war, because when we haven't had a world war, it's just everyone's been way too unstable in the world but me. Uh, you can see from the world powers right now, we have me, then Italy, Shanghai, which came out of nowhere and is rapidly going up the ranks. We have Brazil, Russia, British Empire, Lusatia, <laughs> Peru for some reason. Yep, the world for sure has been incredibly unstable, but maybe it's all gonna boil over in Hoi 4 and we're finally gonna get the world war that we really need to just clear up the world. And, uh, yeah, what that becomes of Europe, I'm not too sure, but it's gonna be messy. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Mega Campaign. I'm very, very looking forward to, uh, seeing what comes of Hoi 4 in this because, uh, Oh lord, it's gonna be crazy. <clears throat> oh!
All right, hello, my gravy babies. And you have made it to the end of the 2021 Mega Campaign Arena. That's right. Our journey through CK3, EU4, and Vic 2 will now come to an end in Hearts of Iron 4, a game I honestly can say I've never played before in my life. Uh, I do want to say, as the uh, this is the finale, that I want to just thank everyone for supporting the series once again this year. And if you enjoyed it, just leave a like hit the subscribe button down below and check out all the people who made the converters possible for this series in the links down below but yes the mega pain must always come to an end and today it shall come to a fiery one now as usual i did make a few adjustments to the map to clean things up a bit and to also um well, I'll, I'll just show you. So, this is exactly how the uh, converter converted things. And uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Yeah, um, it didn't... Well, the Victoria 2 is kind of a hard one for Mega Campaigns because the AI really doesn't do much expanding. It, um, it just kind of ends up sitting there not doing anything. Uh, so I did go ahead and make a few adjustments uh, to see what would happen if I actually try to make an interesting scenario out of all this. And uh, after many run-throughs on Spectator, seeing what the AI would do, I finally come up with one that actually works. So BOOM! This is what has come out of that mess. Uh, so as you can see, the little micro states over here, um, I just annexed into three bigger states so we can actually see something happen. And then I also just cleaned up the broken up HRE that got um, dismantled at the end of Victoria 2. So Bulgaria is now free out of them and... Sieb Siebenbergen Sieb Siebenbergen uh, They're just united out the big mess that was the HRE And uh, yeah, America, I gave a little bit of a clean up up here uh, Yucatan's all the same except this one province And uh, South America too, I cleaned up South America a little bit uh, The AI also released their colonies as puppets in Victoria too So I just re-annexed them all back into them Except a couple big ones like Italian West Africa and British Congo Just to make it easier for the AI to actually do some pushing And then I also just uh, integrated all of the small little Indonesian states That uh, existed on these islands into just one big one Which uh, um, that, that worked a bit better for them, so now we have three of them. Yeah, that's about it, really. Uh, just small little things to um, make the game actually more interesting. I would like for the AI to focus more on actually fixing damn messes <laughs> in Victoria 2, but it never happens. But we still end up with somewhat of an interesting scenario like we do today. Obviously, we won't be looking over here and down there and over there and everywhere. We need to look at Shang, the Empire of Shang. And unlike other mega campaigns, we still are democratic. In fact, we've got the Socialist Party under Zuma in charge right now with our king, King Lang Han. We still have the exact same dynasty, which is crazy. And here we are. We are an absolute economic powerhouse, obviously, from uh, Victoria 2, where we had like 8,000 factories. So I won't be getting involved in too much war just yet. And the converter does actually try to convert a focus tree for us, where we can actually do a little bit down here um, and that goes for all the other nations around us too they also get war goals on people to kind of kind of get like a little world war going but i've also set up my own wars to start to um get the ai to <laughs> budge a bit more i have done many run throughs of this game so far just to see how it ends up and at the moment i think it's fine uh, after what i've set up but Things could go bad, that's all I'm gonna say. But obviously, 1936, the Empire of Shang isn't exactly the most expansionist or interventionist country around. The only land we've really taken in quite a few years is this part of China, which we took to obviously limit the power of Shanghai, the communist threat on our border. Yeah, I do feel like we may have to deal with this once again, because they are looking pretty scary. The Americans, after our great intervention in them, have actually managed to get quite a bit of land and reach the Pacific, which is, um, 
I guess impressive, but they are still incredibly, incredibly weak. Still have a couple more nations left, like Louisiana and the Scottish Californian Republic. Uh, we'll see how the Kingdom of America comes out of that. We also have our Shangzhou New Granada down here, which is just the <laughs> worst thing we probably created that entire game. Now it's time for us to take stock of our situation and see what we can do. We completely forgot, we did have our alliance at the end of the game, and you saw the British just left it, which means it's now just me and the Russians, who are the, the only people I was allied with in Victoria 2, other than the Americans, who also seem to have left. Other than that, there doesn't appear to be any other factions around, so it is just the Chinese United Front, which isn't the name I'd go for, but sure. I guess it does make sense for me to be allied with the Russians, though, as we both have a communist threat on our border we need to deal with. Lusatia, which is the, I guess, dominant power over here, uh, is the Polish faction that has also also, which I did not realize, started fashion. And they've also got quite a few expansionist ideas in their focus tree, so I get the feeling they might be the one to pop the war off. I also set up these German states to all fight each other for dominance over which one of them will finally form some sort of Germany. If you're wondering what happened if I didn't make them into mega states like this, by the way, uh, yeah, nothing happened. Literally, I ran the game to like 1945, Nothing happened. Personally though, I have no plans to switch the Empire of Shang from the democratic process it's already under. Whilst it might be fun to go ahead and maybe turn fascist or communist or the nationalist, I think democracy has done us well. Also, I had to put down so many socialist communist revolts in Vic 2. I'm not giving in to them. There you go. Uh, it looks like the, the wars in Europe are kicking off. And we've got the Austrians declaring war on what's left at the HRE, which is now the HRR. <laughs> it's kind of cursed the Holy Roman Republic. <laughs> and then we've got Hanover declaring war on Hesse. So um, we'll see what comes out of both of them. I mean, Austria has flip-flopped out of existence for the past, like, 50 years now, so it would be interesting to see them, like, make a comeback here, or, or no, actually, no, it would not. Oh, that has quite literally put Austria back on the map. Oh, yeah, well, looks like Hanover's gonna be the big power here, which is interesting, because I've seen it go different ways before, and it looks like they're going straight into Bavaria as well. You may also notice that the world tension is still relatively low, and uh, that is by design. There are a lot of wars that go off and you gotta remember this is a world that has not had a world war don't worry things get pretty spicy pretty quickly oh <laughs> Speak of the devil. Oh, that does not look like it's going too well for the Austrians. <laughs> France was at war with the Spanish over North Africa. Yeah, essentially what we've uh, we've set up here is actually just another Victoria 2 game. <laughs> but this time, people are actually doing some expansion. <laughs> well, for like the third time in this damn mega campaign, Austria's been wiped off the map. I'm sure they'll be back. Pretty unfortunate there for the Spanish colony because it uh, looks like the Moroccans have chosen their time under the communists to uh, lead a revolution against them. Oh, and yeah, there goes Yugoslavia too. It's, uh, <laughs> rest in peace. Uh, you know, like, I feel like you have enough land. Uh, probably more so than anyone in Europe. Uh, I know you're kind of new to this world book area, but, uh, I'd be a little bit worried if I were you. I do gotta say, it is kind of funny seeing Czechoslovakia and then Slovakia independent. <laughs> Damascus declared war on Kurdistan, though. Uh, that's kind of getting a little bit close to home here. If you could just keep the wars over in Europe, that'd be much better. Oh, they're calling me in. Um, oh my god, lose 20 percent stability. <laughs> okay, I might have to join this. Note to self, <laughs> never guarantee Kurdistan ever again. And there goes Damascus, which was, I think, the very last crusader state still around. Um, I did puppet them, though, just for old time's sake. Oh, the uh, the war in Spain's definitely looking <laughs> fun. You damn Europeans and their barbarian ways. I don't think we can really trust these guys when they are just so violent and expansionist, unlike us, who got our empire by peace. Uh, excuse me? Uh, I don't think I like this. This is quite a big play. 
Quite a big play. I say, this is what we call in the history books. Not cool, bro. <laughs> What's even funnier here is that now Czechoslovakia doesn't even have the Czechs because Lusatia just demanded the land from them. Oh, <laughs> and they definitely won't have Slovakia either afterwards. Oh, and with that, the world tension has actually started to go up. Things are officially getting spicy. Oh, it was the Russians. The Russians declaring war on Deben, which has been here for God knows how long has finally set it off. I don't guarantee the Russians are just in my faction so I can willfully and uh, very happily say no to that one. No thank you Russia. Just the fact you're here Russia is because of me. I I went in there and I formed your nation for you with a goddamn Shang manpower. Oh, I, I guess they're coming in for the rest of it. Oh, and uh... I guess there goes Prussia too. I don't know if I like this. Oh, well, there's a faction now. The Lithuanian faction between Spain and Lithuania. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, this was a... A little interesting piece still, just a little bit of Russia in the middle there. Oh, well, yeah, uh, doesn't look like uh, France is looking too fresh right now. Oh my god, okay, things have kicked off quite a bit here. Uh, the faction, the great Lithuanian faction as it's called, now has Japan in it. And both Hanover and the Lusatians, and they're also at war with Russia? Alright, I, I did not foresee this scenario, but I kind of like it. Uh, I think it's time we get off our very comfortable butts and start helping the world out. Oh my god, okay, well... That's disgusting, for one! I'm sure, I'm not getting involved just yet, but I am gonna send you 70,000 guns. Please do not die. Are the Italians involved now, too? Okay, the Italians are at war with Hanover? Uh, the Americans want to join the faction. Welcome back, America! Am I gonna have to save your ass again? And so I think World War One has been decided. These are the two factions, and uh, I'm not even involved yet. I will be involved, though. We are just working down our focus tree now. Now it's open to finally deal with the one menace we need to deal with. Oh, the socialists are no longer in, and we now have Gao Peng, who's going to take us on a very different interventionist route. See, we can't really get involved anywhere internationally whilst we have the threat of Shanghai on our border. They have a lot of troops and a lot of potential, so we're gonna have to deal with these guys before we can go help the Russians. Uh, at least that's what Gao Peng keeps telling everyone. <laughs> Isn't that right? Right, gal. Smooth talking charmer. <laughs> it's, it's like if Roosevelt during World War II was like, "Hey guys, yeah, we'll come help you with that German and Japan thing, but first we gotta we gotta take care of the Mexicans. They're being pretty warmongery." <laughs> War plan Shanghai has been activated, even though I wasn't quite ready for it to be activated, and we're going in. It's finally time we deal with China once and for all. You can really tell there wasn't a World War One in this damn universe, considering the war consists of just pure infantry slamming against each. Each other. Shanghai also got Kurdistan and the Italians in the faction. Uh, Kurdistan, for whatever reason, is not joining, and uh, doesn't look like they will join. And the Italians are taking pressure off the Russians, who I guess are they at war with? I, I can't, it's hard to tell. But uh, anyway, I will have to deal with the Italians as well as the Shanghai, so uh, hopefully we can deal with them at some point. Oh, we might be able to get a pretty hecking. Epic and so, oh my god, so many troops. And yes, this is our new invention. It's called the tank. Oh, we gotta meme them out of this port before they can make a breakout. Oh lord, okay. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I don't know if these are just really small divisions or they're actually gonna have a significant impact here, but there are two million casualties, so we'll see what happens when I uh, overrun them. There's literally over a hundred communist Shanghai divisions. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, moment of truth. They went up 800,000 ca- Okay, that's a lot less than I thought, but 800,000 men in a dial. Pretty crazy. Uh, Alright, now the front line is definitely looking <laughs> a lot more sparser. 
<laughs> now that there's a hundred divisions not on it. Ah, the undefended capital of the perversion of our great Shang name shall finally be brought to heel. Ooh, there we go. Just how it was always meant to be. Oh, it looks like these guys joined their faction at the last minute, so I can't have you guys being on my border like that. Shang Zhao reactionaries demand a referendum, and the National Party will now be put in charge under Kuang Jiang, although that looks like Emperor Pui to me. Oh, I guess uh, we weren't too fond of Gao Peng, but um, the, the war's going great. That's all that matters. <laughs> Who got to say? That looks pretty good on the map. I may be a little bit late, Russia, but uh, when I turn up, I turn up with the cavalry, all right? Uh, so we're gonna have to knock the Italians out of this war, and then we're gonna have to join the Russians in their other war. Hopefully, uh, it's just Italy, we gotta capitulate, and then we'll help deal with this. Ooh, there we go. That was our first war. First part of World War II, I should say, actually. And we got a bit of restructuring of part of the world to do. Alright, okay. World's looking a little bit better. Uh, the war's not over. I'm not in the war against the Lithuanian faction yet, but it did just get bigger. It's a bit of a problem. Oh, good to see they're all immediately fighting in my vassal Damascus. Oh god, gotta rule you. The front line over here does not look very fresh. Uh, so I'm just focusing on Japan for now. Alright, Japan, come out with your hand. We've been allied. Hold on, we've been allied since like, the beginning. <laughs> I do feel bad killing you. Uh, you joined the wrong faction. <sighs> Alright, we have spread our shang -ness all the way to Japan now, which means we have Unfortunately, you need to go join the rest of the war. Oh god, the worst part is there's just no airfields anywhere. Oh no. Did you notice as well, <laughs> Italy just wormed their way back into this war, you cheeky devil. That's right. Papa's home and the children have been naughty while I've been gone. Uh, although I, I guess I didn't ever really get involved in Europe, but um, I'm involved now. Well, we've got that I puppeted uh, Yugoslavia, so uh, yeah, these are going to come in handy. And with that, that is one front cleared up. Uh, we've just got to deal with the, the main front up here, which uh, I've got no idea. Right, I got all my tanks on the southern front here, and I think this will be our break. Sure, there are mountains here, but uh, we, we should should still be able to do a lot of damage, which we we actually were. okay. We're getting we're getting quite far, right? There we go. That is uh that is quite the breakthrough, eh? Uh, I'm gonna need a bit more oil though, and considering I'm importing so damn much already, uh, let's just get a little bit more, shall we? We got a real World War One situation over here, which is funny because it is World War One. Now there's no way we can really push. It's just no supply because it's all Russian land, and they are not building up infrastructure, and there's just so many. AI troops, and also, um, well, that's it, really. That's the problem. Yeah, so instead, we are going to open up a brand new front in the British Empire. That invasion fails, though. I do have a, um, a backup option. Operation T in the Harbor is a go. Oh, I feel like this might be, yeah, that was a little bit overkill. I thought there might be more on the port. We gotta go. We gotta go fast. Boom, not bad. Uh, might wait for another nuke, though, before I invade the mainland. And I think next up, we're gonna aim for Spain. Oh, well, let's hope we can do the same thing we did with England. There's not a lot of troops in Spain, and we just run over them, capitulate them quickly, and be done with this. Oh, I already see quite a bit on the, uh, on the coast. So here and there, but here we go. I got three nukes just in case. Hopefully, blow my way in. <laughs> Let me in. Perfect. Perfect landing. Now we have to run before they pull troops back because these guys are on the mainland. And uh, I don't know if you remember, there's uh, there's, there's also quite a few troops on the mainland. <laughs> go, little tank. Snake them, snake. <sighs> Oh my god, that is a lot of equipment. Jeez! Oh, that, that, yep, that just left them wide open. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna have to just ignore the gaps and just go straight in. We'll keep busy on the uh, eastern front to start an attack. It's gonna, millions will die and equipment will be lost and not a single province will be taken, but we gotta keep them there while we rush. Screw it, I took all of my troops off the eastern front and I'm all, t we're all going over here. We're gonna make this work. We're gonna do it. The neighbor Shang! Get me the hell out of this war. You gotta say, it's, uh, this might be a painful war. But uh, seeing the Empire of Shang over Europe does feel pretty good. Ooh, there you go. Okay, one down. How many left? We need Lusatia, Lithuania. Lith 
Live for Wania. Oh, well, they did not have a lot of equipment left, but that's Lusatia down. Now we just need the Italians and the Lithuanians for some reason. So I'm back on this godforsaken Eastern Front. I'm just gonna do this the easy way, and that's by dropping a nuke. Oh my god. <laughs> It's over. <laughs> well, after much deliberation, shouting, screaming, Chinese men slapping Russians for not doing anything in the war, we've done it. We've achieved peace in Europe. And that's right, I did bring Austria back from the death. <laughs> Again, why are you alive? But we have done it. We've got the Holy Roman Germany, led by a man with a really cool hat. The Netherlands is back. France has been rebirthed. Lyon is cool and purple. And most importantly, Siemenberg. Siemenberger have done it. We have finally achieved world peace. There probably won't be a lot of peace, I'll be real with you. Uh, mostly because I'm still at war with Majapahi, but uh, <laughs> no thank you. That was definitely a journey, okay? We, we went far today. <laughs> we went far. So damn far. But I gotta say, the Empire of Shang, whilst not being mostly a expansionist nation, we did do a lot of expanding though, looking at where we started and where we are. We have conquered a lot. All under the name of a man whose lips didn't exist. And uh, we did, and always were kind of way ahead of Europe. They never really got their stuff together, I gotta say that much. But now, under the leadership of Shang, and following our great Shang belief, <laughs> you're gonna learn a thing or two. Is uh... It's very good to see the Chinese United Front over pretty much the entire world, gotta say that. But yes, I hope you all enjoyed this year's mega campaign. I hope you have a very nice holidays if you do celebrate Christmas. And if not, I hope you're just having a cool little winter so people do get down in the dumps. Or if you're in the Southern Hemisphere and don't support Christmas... It's just a normal time for you, really, isn't it? But yeah, hope you all enjoyed the mega campaign this year. I very much enjoyed doing it. It was very different, playing as the uh, Empire of Shang, especially over here in the East. Obviously, each year I'll try and switch it up, like, a little bit enough so it's not always the same stuff. But, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, hit subscribe button down below, and, uh... Have a happy holidays, I suppose, and a merry little Christmas to people who love it.